So, be careful, Anna, when he's talking about the um, in the back of light on yoga, you can look at all the different conditions that he has cures for, yoga cures for, and when he's talking about foot problems, he says, the first thing he says is, do all the standing poses. So today we're going to go through some standing poses, and obviously they're, they're treating the whole body, you know, but we're going to think about them today in relation to the feet. So here's the best one. We've done this one before, Tadasana. So come into your standing pose. You want your feet hip distance apart. If you don't know what hip distance apart is, then put your fists like this. Put them between your feet. That's your hip distance. And then here's how I like to find Tadasana. Press the ball mounds of your big toes into the mat. This is a ball mount right there. Press the ball mounds of the pinky toes into the mat. And then if you've got foot problems, you can feel that right there. What we're doing is we're finding places on either foot where we're pronating or supinating and fixing it, realigning the weight. What that, what that does is it makes the primary arches on your foot rise up, but it also makes these, these arches lateral, I think they're called, arches, in between those two ball mounts wake up. And if you can't feel that in the beginning, that's okay. I can barely feel it now, but it is happening. So anyway, we're establishing that the evenness along the balls of the feet, and then put your toes on the ground, and then we're going to find evenness between the front part of the foot and the back part of the foot. And this uh, this just makes my core come right on. Just and I like to rock back and forth and find my way. It makes the the quads and the knees have sort of like a different kind of thing going on. That's oh, interesting. And so then we're going to deliberately work with the quads by taking the kneecaps up into the quads. See what happens? See my quads like go in like that? It's supposed to happen. But we're going to compensate by taking the shins out. So like my legs are moving in two different directions right now. And all I'm going to do, all I'm trying to do is make our body really steady and square. So from the waist down right now, like pretty much every muscle I've got is active. A little, like a little bit active, not really working, working, but just, you know, present. Then the lower ribs go down and back, the shoulders go up and back, the chin comes out of the chest, head flows like a balloon. This is Tadasana. It's such a good pose. From here, I'm turning, you know what to turn. So back to warrior two. And again, we're thinking about the feet here. So in warrior two, we've got our front leg something like 90 degrees. We've got our back foot at about 60 degrees. And the front heel is supposed to bisect the back arch in warrior two. But we open our arms like this. What I like to say about this pose, about warrior two and warrior one, is that it's about the back leg. A lot of people's tendency is to put their weight here and even here. That's not what we want. We want to pour the weight backwards. At least, so at least 50% is going back. That's going to take your mind. Your mind's going to have to do that for you. And then take your shoulders back and down the back and open your heart. And what we're thinking about here is the calves, the ankles, the feet. So those four points that we found on each foot in our Tadasana, feel them here, especially this back foot. Find those four points in that back foot. Find the four points in your front foot. And see if you can feel the energy coming up from the floor, through the four points on each of those feet, into your core. That's how this is a foot pose. All right, now we're going to turn our hips. So our hips are faced to the side in warrior two. We're going to turn forward, keeping that back foot in the same approximate angle, but I like to scoot my front foot. I'm going to scoot it to the left a little bit, just give my hips a little room, because we're turning our hips forward now. And this is warrior one, rearranging my back foot, just so I feel a little bit more stable but it's approximately in the same position. And warrior one is a totally different pose because we're still distributing the weight evenly between the front and the back, but we're facing forward. And so everything is different. Don't have it be about this knee. Don't have it be just about this quad. We're taking at least half of the weight back here. And think about what this pose is doing for your calf, your ankle, and your foot, both on the front and the back. It's a stretch and it's really working those muscles. Good, now watch this. But to me, this is so interesting. 
pick up your back heel. And then feel that turn. So we just, we went from a warrior one into a high lunge. Just by picking up that back heel. And it's a very similar pose. But at the same time, really different. Particularly on the lower part of the leg. Really different. Good. Now straighten that front leg and step the back foot forward about 12 inches. And this time we're, we don't have the back foot at 60 degrees. This time the feet are pointing the same direction like railroad tracks. And they're a little bit apart, just like from our warring one. And I like to roll my shoulder blades back down the back here. Of course we're talking about calf muscles and heels and ankles. So what's going on in the shoulders is not as relevant, but I still like it. And then before we come down, just feel, feel the weight coming down here, down your back leg. Feel the stretch in your back ankle, back heel. And then come on forward. And then the pose starts to be a lot of stretch in the front leg. Feel whatever you feel. And if it feels good to let go of the arms and put them down on the floor, that's fine. We're stretching our entire body, but today we're really thinking about those feet. Good, put your hands on the floor and step back to downward dog and walk out your dog. We talked already this week a couple of times about how good this is for the feet and ankles. Walking out the dog. It's just a totally manual stretch of the lower part of the leg and the foot. It's fabulous. All right, now this time, what are we doing here? Let's take the left, the left leg forward. No, sorry, right leg forward. Take your right leg forward. The five warrior two. And whenever I come to warrior two, I like to think about it for a little bit. I like to settle, settle into it. To feel like the back half of my body is very stable, very even. The front half of my body is very stable, very even. What we are learning in yoga is the ability to read our body from the inside. It takes a lot of practice. It's not about being able to achieve these poses. It's about being able to feel your way into them and out of them. Thinking about that back foot, back four, four corners of the back foot, four corners of the front foot. If you're really strong and you like it harder, you can scoot your feet apart further and come down lower. I don't like it harder. I like it easier. But do whatever you want. In this pose, we are trying to have our knee above our, uh, what's that thing, heel. Feeling a stretch and a lot of work in the lower part of this leg and the lower part of this leg. Good. And then I'm going to scoot my left foot a little bit to the left. Keeping my back foot in approximately the same position, turning my hips forward, arms go up, and this is warrior one. It's a lot like warrior two, and at the same time, completely different. What is the same, though, is this idea of letting the mind divide our body weight and send half backwards and half forwards. Think about that. The back ankle and the back heel and the back foot are getting a huge stretch right now. Warrior one. Warrior one for more advanced people. Warrior one is also a back bend. And the more, the more you can get this back leg to feel like it's a post and you're just leaning on it, the more you're going to feel this back bend start to approach. That's like, don't even worry about that. But it's going to come. At some point, it's going to come. Back bend. Good. Now here's the really exciting part. Pick up your heel. And now we're in high lunge. And now that back foot is getting a completely different stretch from the calf to the ankle to the foot. And it's, and it's different up here on the psoas too. It's just different. Breathing. If you're like me and you had your shoulders up like this, try and take your shoulders back and down the back.
Good, and then step your back foot forward about 12 inches. I like to do this. We've got our feet uh, like railroad tracks now. And we're coming down over that front leg. Ooh. That's a big stretch. And it's big on the hamstrings, but you can feel it all the way down into the calves too. on the floor and then walk your hands to the side. Take your legs out further if that feels good and come down. This is Prasarita Padasanasana, straddle forward fold. You're going to know right away what it is. It's just about feeling this pose wherever it is. And so a lot of people like to be on blocks here. If you're pretty stiff through the groin area or in your hips, you might like to be on blocks. Some people can come all the way down with their head on the floor. That's great too. So most people are in between those two points. So just find where you are, it's okay. Where you are is good. And then notice what's happening here in the calves, the ankles and the feet. Now we're getting a stretch from the foot to the side. So good. Yoga is so well designed. All right, for weight in your hands, we're gonna jump to a forward bend. Inhale to a flat back that's like this, Ardha Uttanasana, and then exhale, forward bend Uttanasana. Releasing your calves, releasing your ankles, releasing your feet. If you want more foot stuff, take your backs of your hands onto the floor and step on your palms. This is, you can only do that if you're pretty flexible. It's not actually really doing that much more for the feet. It's more getting into the hamstrings. This sort of massage for the All right, inhale your arms up. Exhale your hands to your heart. That was five minutes for your feet. Namaste. Happy October.